And this resin is pretty stinky. I mean, this is harmful vapors. You know, I read the can when I first got the uh, vapors, contact with skin, cause eyes, irritant, uh, flammable. So really fun stuff. We're working in this huge building, so I'm not too worried about it. There's a bit of an airflow in here. If you're going to do this at home, outside. Or in, but if you're going to do it outside, you don't want to do it in direct sunlight. If you've got a, a pop-up tent, you've got an umbrella or anything you can have over you, the direct sunlight, especially on a warm day, is going to make this stuff kick off a lot quicker than what you'd want it to. Um, it was setting up when I did this test one in my garage. It got to a thickness where you couldn't work with it. You would wreck it probably within about four minutes maybe five but it all depends on how much catalyst you you put in so i'm going to mix this in my cup here got to look across my sphere to see how much resin i'm actually going to need versus the cup and it's not that much because we're you know the resin if you look at the cup obviously you got a squared off corner there's no squared off corner here so you can use a lot less than what you think all right so the stinky resin. I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not weighing anything out. You just gotta work with it long enough to, to know how much you, you need. I'm gonna go a little bit extra. I'd rather have a little bit more and waste a little bit of the resin then not have enough and end up with a big air bubble because the, the paper didn't set down far enough. Catalyst, this is just like a um, fiberglass resin, very similar to fiberglass resin. If you do any fiberglass mold making, you'll, you'll know it smells exactly the same. Catalyst is very, very similar. It's gonna kick off pretty much the same. It's a little bit warmer in here than the last time I poured this up, so I'm not gonna use as much catalyst. And this is just like a, a dropper bottle. And I got about 20 drops in there. So that should kick off relatively so. Now I'm gonna stir this slowly. I don't wanna mix a ton of air into this. I want the, the least amount of bubbles. But you can't, uh, you can't help but agitate this and get bubbles into this. And you see it's going a little bit green. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera or not, but that's because of the, uh, the chemical reaction that's taking place right now with the catalyst and the resin. And that will go clear. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pour this similar to pouring a, a soda or a beer. Um, Typically, you get the you get the bottle and you get it close to the uh, the tap, so you don't get as much foam or bubbles. I'm going to do this very similar way: is pour this as close to the plastic as possible. So I'm getting it right up to that line, that black line that we had earlier. Now I'm going to pour some right on the eye. I want to make sure that that is going to catch some of the uh, the plastic as well, some of the resin that I already poured into the eye. So I want this wet when it goes in. Don't want it dry. I'm gonna bend this a little bit. And just drop it in, push it. I don't want to get too much resin on the outside. So there's there's going to be air bubbles in there no matter what. That's just the nature of this. If we've got a, you don't want to put this in an evacuator. If you guys even have, if you know what an evacuator is, that actually draws the air. It's a chamber that we have, and we typically use it for our silicone mold making, but it pulls the bubbles, it pulls the air out of the chamber that would be bad for this. What we'd really like to have is a pressure pot that we could put this into and it actually squeezes the air 
and makes the, the bubbles really tiny. Right now we're just hoping that, uh, I'm just turning this a little bit, making sure that the, the resin's hitting the, uh, the eye. And there's no left, right, up or down on the, uh, on the paper, on the, uh, the actual eye artwork that we did. So it doesn't really matter how it goes in. I know that this is uh, with these marks and the veining that we did here, that's the side, the corners of our eye, you know, the inside or outside corner. But it doesn't really matter how I turn this. But I just want to make sure that when I do the other one, it doesn't look exactly the same, it's not in the same position. And more than likely, it's not going to be. 